So I saw a couple things about the Sebastian Rogers case, the disappearance of the 15 year old autistic boy. Uh, I wanted to kind of point some things out that I noticed theory wise that didn't quite jive based on what was said. I'm not saying that this is the factual thing that has been stated by, you know, Katie Proudfoot and husband or stepfather, Chris Proudfoot of Sebastian. So uh, the things that I've seen or theory wise was, oh, um, yeah, maybe he was locked out. Okay. Maybe, you know, as a punishment, I know we've seen that before in other cases, but I'm going to have to say no on that. Here's why. When asked on the Nancy Grace show, which by the way, was fantastic the way that she asked those questions and circled back around and small details. Okay. So which side of the house is his, you know, window on his bedroom window? What is he going to step on when he opens it um, and crawls out? Let's say bushes, mulch, things like that. Now, one of the things that she asked was, okay, so does he know the lock to the front door of the house, which is a key cap, keypad? She said, yes. Katie Proudfoot said, yes. Well, that kind of debunks that theory right off the rip, doesn't it? He knows the code. Doesn't really make sense here if, oops, sorry about that. Doesn't really make sense here if uh, he knows the code to the front door. So the lockout thing isn't really gonna work. A couple things that I did notice, of course, uh, Looking at these interviews, you've got interview one, which was eight days after the disappearance was recognized. She she realized it. OK, he's missing. I can't find him. He's gone. I don't particularly care for that word. Uh, the standard that I see with like frantic parents is, oh, my God, where are they? They're missing. Uh, I can't find them. Things like that. Eight days went by before anything was said publicly. And I can tell you as a parent, uh, I'm going to have a megaphone. You're going to like see some crazy lady running from door to door. Where is my child? Have you seen him? Oh my God. Okay. It would take an army to keep me away from that. Um, which we kind of saw the unusual aspects with Madeline Soto as well, but that didn't happen for eight days, eight days. Okay. Now being a 15 year old boy, yes, it could change the, what's the right word here? maybe the urgency behind it. I don't agree with that, mostly because obviously we know that he's autistic. I was kind of hearing conflicting back and forth of, well, he's actually high functioning. He's not, you know, somebody who really struggles with the day-to-day -day things, okay? So I don't know. Um, I think there was enough there to believe that he probably wouldn't go on his own, especially in the middle of the night, barefoot which we're presuming, okay? So in interview one, we hear her say, well, I don't know why he went out that front, that door, I, I believe was the verbiage. How do you know he went out the door? That makes me uncomfy too, okay? We don't know how he went out. We don't know what door he went out, right? Presumably, we don't, uh, in addition to him being gone. We don't know that he's gone. We know that he's missing. So the verbiage in addition to that made me a little uncomfy, a little unsettled. All right, so then I started noticing some other theories. Um, now, I just kind of want to throw this out here, obviously. This video is not to blame anybody or point fingers at anybody and say, oh my God, I knew you did it. That's not what we're trying to do. I kind of wanted to just take a minute to explain like investigator standpoint again on what I look at from the outside in. So one of those is, okay, well, maybe Chris Proudfoot, the stepfather and Katie's husband, uh, Maybe he was on the phone with her and left his phone there during the conversation um, and took a, another vehicle, left the phone there so that the line was open. That way the phone would ping where he was, which was in Memphis, is what he stated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not a terrible theory, except the fact that we know both he and Sebastian's father have both stated I called, I, don't, I can't remember if it was a, a text or a call, Seth Rogers saying, hey, please don't be upset, but we can't find him, he's missing, I believe was the verbiage. But so if it's a three hour drive from Memphis to Hendersonville, and they called him on that phone and or texted him on that phone verbatim, within obviously not too far from 
the actual report being made. Could he really have left that particular phone with an open line that only Katie could have cut off so that they could throw off police, obviously, with the phone pinging there? Well, he didn't just magically appear with this phone if he left it there and it's a three and a half hour drive. Kind of debunks that one a little bit for me. Um, now, the other thing, too, is his phone was there in the kitchen counter. He had his glasses. We're presuming he left that front door. We're presuming what he was wearing. Okay, remember that all of this stuff, and I'm not saying anybody's lying, all of this stuff is being told by somebody else. It's their story. So that kind of makes me wonder, are we sure that's what he's wearing? Could he have changed? Sure, of course he could. We don't know that. Uh, the type of things that I noticed uh, as far as like, okay, I walk up here and we don't instantly say, okay, the parent is lying. There's some added information between interview one, which I believe was, again, eight days after Sebastian was missing from Katie and Chris Proudfoot. In the second interview, there's only hands. They don't want to put their, their faces up there. What you got to remember, too, is they've already been accused, right? Because it's odd. It's odd behavior. We know this. I know this. I'm a parent. You may or may not be a parent, but we know as adults that are responsible, if there is a kid missing, we're going to find that kid, period. Okay, lose our minds up until then. I probably couldn't eat or sleep, you know, in between crying and gasping for air. But uh, so the inconsistencies here, I would not say too much. So at this point, it was a little odd. Because everybody originally, even let's say a, a spouse ends up injured or deceased, morbid, sorry. Who's going to be a primary suspect in number one? Typically, that's going to be the partner, the spouse, the surviving spouse. Where were you? phone pinging, making sure we have alibi, they were working, we have documentation of this, etc. Okay, it's just it's how it goes. The last person to have seen the person that is either deceased and or harmed or missing is going to be primary suspect number one, you're the last person to see the child. It's not uncommon to point those fingers in addition to the fact that the behavior is a little odd. It's, it's not normal. I'll just say that I'm not saying anything, you know, as far as accusatory here, I'm just saying it's odd. And it makes people get a feeling. Um, all right. So I also noticed in the third interview, uh, in this interview, I, I want to say it was Smiley's World, which, uh, by the way, it was good. That was great. That was long. Um, Chris Proudfoot was allowed to talk a little bit more, more openly, kind of on his own terms, what he wanted to say, what he wanted the world to hear. In addition to, like I said, Seth Rogers has been doing his interviews and has been searching for the child every single day. Okay, just every single day. Uh, it, was a, it was a bit odd, it was a bit defensive. Uh, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, the punishment and a belt being used in that. Um, I, I will say this, okay. <clears throat> Using a belt or corporal punishment for a child that struggles with autism is a little bit, well, it's a little bit gross. Uh, it makes me very unsettled. If a person doesn't quite understand what they're doing wrong, if a person doesn't understand personal boundaries or maybe they're lacking a little bit in the social atmosphere, I, it's something how can you really punish them for if they don't understand what they're doing wrong? That's the whole point of a punishment, right? Is to when we correct our children is so that they understand what they're doing wrong so that they don't do it again. This wasn't okay. You knew it wasn't okay. Most of the time, that's how it goes. You really shouldn't punish a kid who, you know, doesn't understand what is up or down. It doesn't make sense to me. So the other thing is, even if he was not autistic, don't you find it a little odd to corporal punish a 15-year-old child? He's in high school. He's in high school. It's weird. I don't care what degree of autism it is. How, how, you know, the spectrum, it's still weird. Uh, you know, at, at 15, I was playing around with makeup and hair dye and had boyfriends and back and forth. I understand that he's, you know, a little bit different. It's still a little odd. Um, you know, there's been some inconsistencies since then. And again, added information. But that doesn't necessarily say murder. Um, and that's the, the big thing here. I also 
like I said, with these theories, when I look at Katie Proudfoot, and I'm just kind of going off what I see, I would kind of presume that she doesn't blow dry her hair. Okay. It looks kind of like she, when she gets out of the shower, that she uh, maybe like leaves some mousse in it or some gel air dries. And even if she doesn't air dry it, it still looks like it's, you know, a little bit wet, like it air dried. Um, actually, in several interviews, I've noticed that um, about her. When investigators and law enforcement arrive and they notice that some things are a little odd. There's no forced entry that's appearing here. There's no screen, like I said, removed. There's no, you know, marks on the door. There's no anything like that. And I know that they said they brought dogs in and around the area, but at a certain point, when you start to notice that there's oddities or conflicting statements or maybe uh, unusual behavior, um, I, if I notice that her hair is wet, all right, I'm going to go and I'm going to look to see if that shower has been used since that morning. Okay, we're here. It's 11 o'clock is when they, well, around 11, Amber Alert goes out. I'm going to go and look. Okay, since 6 to when we arrived, did you also go and find the time to take a shower? Just curious. Now, in the interview that we first saw her, this is going to be probably something you would have to look back on for body cam, which wouldn't be a release uh, because it's an active investigation also involving a child that has not been resolved. So uh, I would presume that would be on a body cam because it was eight days after her first interview was. Uh, that would be weird to me. You know, it's almost like, here's another one. Uh, when I noticed on the interview eight days after the original call or report had been made, uh, why are there scratch marks on Chris, you know, Chris Proudfoot's forearms, both sides? A Yorkie probably is an interesting uh, theory. I, I disagree with that. I have a small Shih Tzu. She is the, the shit of the zoo. Okay, she's an ankle biter at heart. We call her Pixie and her last name is Piranha. For a reason. So if that was the case, did anybody swab those if they were there? Again, that would be something you refer to in the body cam. Did he have those scratches when they arrived? Or was that since the disappearance and then before that first interview? That's a little bit different. Okay, I get that. Um, the added information is very odd to me as well. I don't really like that. You would remember on the first day that you had the very first interview. What was the last thing you heard from him or what was the last thing that he said? How did he seem? What was his demeanor like? You said you told him to go to bed and he said, OK, night, mom. I love you. And that was it. Verbatim. You never said anything about a thud. You never said anything about, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you better go to bed soon or knock it off. You never said anything about that. Uh, what's going on here? Why is that? And that makes me, again, very uncomfortable. I don't like that. It gives me weird, spidey, tingly feels that you didn't include that. That would technically be the last time that you, you talked to him, you spoke to him. Then it said, hey, is there a record for those locks, those digital locks? on the front door, you're a security, home security installer. You said no. These are the things that would make one wonder. These are the things that are not consistent. These are the things that every occurs or, okay, you also, um, I would say omitted. I wouldn't say that you lied. I wouldn't say that you in intended to throw anybody off, but you also, omitted the information that you went and drove around and looked for him. Why? I mean, why? If, if I found one of my children missing, first of all, after I came down from, uh, you know, space, because my whole entire self would leave this planet after I lost my mind, um, I would remember everything. What, what did they say? What did they have for dinner? you know, who were they talking to? Were, were they talking to anybody? What time did they get home? What time did they typically get up? I saw people saying something about the uh, school bus time that comes and picks them up. Well, it comes at 611. Why, why would you wake them up at six? Guys, we got to remember too. 
if he's in special programs at school, he's probably going to be on um, a disabled, a disability bus, handicap bus. Okay. So that was a different time. And all the speculation starts coming up. And I don't really, here's the thing too about the YouTube stuff is going out there and searching and the rescue teams. Yeah. Uh, I think that it is productive to a degree. I also think that law enforcement is not going to give from speaking from experience, law enforcement's not going to give every single detail that they have here. They're going to sit back and watch for a minute. They may have some ideas or inklings of what occurred when you have forensics in there. It doesn't take, it's not hard to see, at least for us, a small droplet or a pattern here of blood. Okay. When you start to see that maybe certain things are missing that don't really look right. Not, I'm not going to throw any like weapon type stuff, but you know, from kitchens, things like that. Only one is missing, not in the dishwasher, not, not in the sink. Things like that kind of, you know, throw you off a little bit or, you know, lead you in the right direction. Um, they're not going to give you every single ounce of information that they have for obvious reasons. Why would they do such a thing? Hey, hey, bad guy. Hey, we're going to give you all the information via YouTube and social media and all that other stuff so that you can prepare for the answer when we ask. Hey, thanks. It's not going to happen like that. It is not going to happen. It should not happen that way. Um, so as I'm watching this kind of unfold and I'm watching these responses and I'm watching these demanding, like, where is the answer? And it's like, you guys, sometimes things take a minute. Now, I would be very curious, too, if they had subpoenaed Katie Proudfoot's messages or her cell phone records. Was there an additional number that was kind of a you know frequent situation here? Who is that? What time? You, know, you said you went to bed at 12 and I'm seeing you up at three. And then there was some weird movement outside of your house at three, which I'm just going to be real with you. I don't really find that to be a, a pertinent piece of this puzzle. Unless it happens to be the two people that reside there in addition to Sebastian, I don't find it pertinent. It's not very visible. There's no audio. It, to me, it, it, the frame looked like it was moving. I mean, I don't know about you, but most stationary security cameras that they randomly don't have for the Nancy Grace interview, which was new. Uh, it's, it's still, the frame does not move as if it is a phone in your hand when you're recording. Kind of concerning. Um, just saying, just throwing it out there. Yeah. So they're not going to give you every single ounce here. I didn't know if the dogs that went in there, are they cadaver dogs? I mean, I'm not trying to be morbid about it, but you got to kind of take a step back and think, did he ever even leave? I, I hate to say this, but it would not be the first time that we have heard and or seen something like that. Did he ever even leave? Uh, here's another point that I kind of noticed too about the behaviors from these two, okay? One was in the first interview, how he kind of took control and he just really took the bull by the horns and he answered for her and he was the dominant, you know, maybe she's afraid of him. I'm going to tell you the first thing that I noticed when they said to her as the mother, how are you handling? How are you? How are you holding up with the situation? How are you coping? <sighs> We're on a constant. And she really. kind of made a, uh, a noise, pretended like she was going to cry and went uh, 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 and looked at him and handed him that torch. He didn't steal that from her, that that light, that spotlight. She handed it to him. Hey, I don't want to answer this or I can't. So here you go. Just, just my perception. <laughs> okay. This was not a, you know, you stole my, my thunder moment. This was a, Hey, I, I want you to take this. Yeah. Um, seeing things like, Oh, we're being accused. Um, I just really feel like that's not the purpose. It should not have been the purpose of the first interview at, in, in itself, but your kid, what about just, you know, who's pointing the finger and who thinks, who cares what anybody thinks? Truly, I can tell you that firsthand. It should be about your kid. I don't care who's accusing me of anything. I want you to know my kid is missing. Notice the verbiage, missing, not gone. Gone gives me, you know, like I said, uncomfies. Don't like it. Why would you say, you know, why would you say that word versus missing, lost? You know what I mean? To me, it gives a, 
a more morbid visual here, almost the way that Stefan Stern said, we miss her presence or feeling her presence here instantly, instantly knew that the child was deceased in my mind. That is something you say about a, you know, a dead grandmother or something like that. Like, oh my God, I, I could feel her presence with me today. Something like that. Not to go off, you know, topic into that, but two very close cases as far as these young children, teenagers. So I, I just kind of felt like this was important to put out here. Some of the ways that I'm looking at it is a little bit different than the, the general public. Well, of course, I've been there as far as when you're actively working a case, when you're looking at these documents, when you think for a second that they're not watching these interviews, girl, they're watching these interviews. Absolutely, they are. And they're going to compare things too, not only to what we have seen publicly defending themselves, I guess you, you could say, in addition to what they first gave them. First description here of what happened. Tell me, tell me what happened. All of it. All of it. You know, um, I think that sometimes we're getting off focus here. The focus is where is Sebastian Rogers? Why? Would the, why would he run? Why would he walk out that door? I don't think that he did. I just don't. It just doesn't add up. Mm -mm. You're looking through to see if he's got any access to that phone with the internet to a stranger that could have picked him up. I'm going to tell you too, child abductors do not drive around at three o'clock in the morning or whenever, hoping to find a, a kid to snatch up. There's no kids playing outside. They're not, they're not playing outside. It's dark. They're in bed, you know, getting ready for school, whatever. That's not, that's not the plan. That's not the, the, the mode of attack here. We're going to wait until, you know, maybe right after school, hope that babysitter is not really watching these kids at the playground today because that, that's how that goes. I'm going to wait for her to look the other way and I'm going to offer this kid some candy or show her a puppy. Tell her, hey, I'm friends with your mom. She told me to come pick you up. Okay. That's how that works. In addition to opportunists, in addition to people that you allow around your children who have alternative motives, but this is not that. Mm -mm. I kind of want to bring up too is the polygraph. The polygraph that mom said that she took, she passed. Again, all of this stuff is based on what's being said. This is not something that we all know any of it to be fact. But this polygraph, she said that she passed. Now, are they admissible in court? No, they're not. But that's not the only thing that they're good for. So I like when people take them just because if they do cooperate, a lot of times they're not going to be forced, right? Oh, I'll take a polygraph. I'm innocent. I'll show you. And then they don't pass it. But it gives that anxiety. It gives them that like urgent, like they're going to figure it out. They're going to find out. I might as well just say something. It, it puts that pressure on. For you to get that uh, that break, that crack, and they go, okay, you know what? Just, I just want to tell you, I just got to get it off my chest because I think you're going to figure it out anyways because of this polygraph, and I believe that it's going to work. It's going to catch me. This is what's going on in their mind, that internal talk. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, bet. So oh, I just figured I'd throw this out here and explain a little bit of how this stuff kind of works. The way that it looks from a distance to me is that opinion based only, right? The way that it looks to me is something is not quite right. The behavior is not quite right. It's making me, what's the right way to say this? Take a second glance. Why would this kid leave? We understand that the home life, like I said, wasn't great. Why would he leave? Where would he go? Was it on his own accord? What if he didn't leave? I can tell you too, that if my child was missing, going for three and a half hours away and or further to another state would not be a thing unless directed by law enforcement, which at this point, I think that they would have stated that. I don't think that was the case. They love to state that stuff. Hey, Law enforcement said I couldn't say anything, so gotcha. Okay, sure. You know what I mean? Where is he? 
I also think it's important to pick up what they're putting down here. From prior law enforcement, just, just saying, I've never seen a reason to search a dump, okay? Not one, two landfills without reason, without something that says, yikes, we should probably go look there. Just being honest, you know, it screams to me, not good. Again, we know that the garbage can was a little heavier. We know that he took them to the road. This is what we're, we're being told, right? This is not what we know for a fact. This is what we're being told. This is what we're going off of. We don't know exactly what they have but I've never seen that done. So that's, that's also telling. The theory of one, Chris Proudfoot leaving that phone on in Memphis, driving back in another vehicle so that Katie Proudfoot could hang it up, but then using the same phone shortly thereafter, after law enforcement was called to let his father know, doesn't, doesn't work for me. Unless, the, unless there's more that we don't know. In addition to him just walking away, doesn't also work for me. Being abducted doesn't fit for me either with what we have. Uh, him being locked out as a punishment, knowing the door code, the keypad to the front door, doesn't work for me. Something else here. And I think we know what that is, but not accusing anyone. I think that behavior can point us in a direction that we we want to place blame because somebody has to be blamed here somewhere, right? Same thing with Riley Strain. They're going after, you know, the, the frat brothers. This is different. This is different. And uh, time's ticking. Time is ticking. But I think shortly there will be answers here. But I think those theories really just don't make sense here. They just don't. All right, uh, just a couple points, like I said. Hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. And uh, hope we've debunked some theories here. And I hope you have a great day. Bye. Oh, it's the Alpha. Again.